So hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to 2022. Um, we're here at Bathurst in the Porsche 911 GT3 car and we're going to be just looking at the setup I've been working on for probably three days now. Um, I must have run over a hundred laps here at Bathurst, probably more, probably into the 200 laps uh, trying to get this car set up in varying temperatures um, just in pursuit of that 201 lap time now if you're coming from PC I think 201's are very much achievable by a very a, a, a huge number of drivers to be honest and um, there's lap times below the two minute version uh, two minute lap time 159's 158's even um, but on console we're definitely not running the same um, not the same quality of game I don't think I think there's areas of the game that might be different whether it's altitude issues or engine output um, but yeah it's definitely different I've seen drivers just chatting away quite quite happily just driving around like they're setting just random laps and they're still hitting 201s like the yeah just easily achievable but in reality a 201 lap in my opinion especially on console is pretty tough um, as you'll see um, from some of the footage that I'll put in um, some of the videos of the fastest laps I've been able to achieve um, managing to set a two um, a two minute lap to the I think it was a 2.098 something like that um, but that's in the extremely low temperatures, 100% cloud cover, 10 degrees ambient air temperature, I think it was 15 degrees trap temperature to get into the two minute mark. And it was a beautiful lap, I will put it at the end of the video, I'll also put um, the two minute, I think it was a two minute two, 0 0.04 or something like that, at 36 degrees trap temperature, again a very, um, a very tough lap and you really are hitting every apex you're nailing every exit of the corners it is a very tough circuit to drive flat out and even the even the smallest lift through some of the corners will add an extra two or three tenths to the lap time especially going up through the hill you really do need to be a hundred percent committed so we'll have a look through the current setup that i've got um We'll have a look at all the setups. I'll happily um, show you all the setups that I've got. There are minor changes um, to each setup, but we'll discuss those. But one thing I did want to raise, um, I had a lovely uh, message from Lawrence Juiced, a regular uh, subscriber to the channel, uh, that left a comment regarding um, wheel ratios. And currently I, I changed the setup or the sensitivity on my wheel to whatever the car is within the game um, so if we come into the garage and we go to the options menu in the controls and you'll see that driving the Porsche I've got the wheel set on 800 degrees of rotation and I also change that on the wheel that I'm using to 800 degrees but there is also a function on here that's automatic now I did try the suggestion that uh, Lawrence had mentioned with uh, regards to a video that Avis had made. Now I know Avis does a, a heck of a lot for the ACC community and especially getting people up to speed with all the physics in the game and all the other settings um, along with that but primarily he is using a PC and I do think the console version is very much different. Um, so as you can see on screen, these are the settings that I'm using, and you, I, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong in saying that um, Avis recommends having the gain set at 100%. But it, by setting it at 100%, obviously you're always going to get a stronger wheel. You're going to get a stronger force feedback. 
and don't get me wrong if that's what you want and you're wanting stronger force feedback it is achievable I mean I'm running the wheel at 140% it does go to 200% I don't know why they changed it it used to be 100% but now it seems to go to the figure that's 200 so I don't understand why they've done that but anyway it used to run at 100% and I reduced that down to I think it was 60% on my wheel the force feedback but since one of the updates I now run it at 140 and I also run in game at 85 but I don't want to run the wheel 100% maxed out all the time so that I'm really struggling and fighting with the wheel if you want to do that and you've bigger built and I mean I've obviously got a bit of a shoulder issue it is so I tend to try and run the wheel at what's comfortable for myself so when I've got it set at gain 8 to 8, yes I can have more force feedback and yes I can have more force feedback on the wheel itself. But going back to the suggestion that um, Lawrence made and what Avis suggests is setting the wheel to 800 to, to automatic and then when you change from car to car change the settings in game so if you're driving something like the Ferrari I think you would come down to 480 and these are all in the video description you can download all these or if you're driving the BMW it's 560 or something like that and the, the, the Bentley's 650 or something 680 but I, I would suggest changing that on the wheel as well I, I did try it on automatic and it almost feels like you've decreased the steering ratio so you need to input more steering into the wheel in order to get the wheel to feel as accurate it just feels like the, the turning circle has been increased but one thing that Avis does recommend is just sitting in the car you can switch to um, um, yeah switch to the view where you can see the in-car wheel and turn your wheel I mean my wheels set at 90 degrees now and it's 90 degrees on the screen and that's what you're wanting to see you want to see a like for likeness if you're turning the wheel at 90 degrees and the wheels turning past 90 degrees there's something wrong with the steering ratio you've got set but that is exactly as I see it as I turn the wheel on in front of me the wheel turns exactly to where it is on the screen um, and if I turn the wheel also it doesn't it shakes because I'm sat still in the pits if I was out on the on the circuit it wouldn't be shaking but it, that's just one of the things but it doesn't try to turn itself back to centre which was one of the things that Avis recommended it shouldn't be doing um, so the centering spring is at zero um, which is I mean I've got drift mode set to minus one but that's so that the wheel doesn't pull back to zero um but yeah let's let's come back into the garage and look over these setups um so the current setup that i've got loaded as you can see at the top there is setting a two minute three lap with at 36 celsius and that's with 50 liters of fuel on board and when i've set this when i've created this setup it's very much um I don't want to be fighting with the wheel all the time round every corner. I want to feel like I can si consistently set a 203. And obviously we're always in pursuit of setting a faster lap. And don't get me wrong, two, 202s are achievable with this setup. And I think even if you use the aggressive setup, I was managing to instantly set a 202.8 uh, in the aggressive setup. But it's very hard to be consistent in the aggressive setup setup it's very unstable um, you need to be very much have your wits about you and at Bathurst the slightest of errors and you're in the wall so to have a car that's consistent and stable but still being able to set good lap times is more beneficial than having a car that's unstable where you're struggling to get a consistent lap time consistency is the key overall so just looking through the setup, obviously the, the tyre temperatures and at Bathurst I very much think 27.5 is what you should be aiming for. Even 27.3 would be adequate. If you go to sort of 27.6, 27.7, you'll start to see down in the bottom right hand corner of the graphic where 
the tire is slightly over inflated you can start to run um, a lower camber at the rear you could go down to four which will give you a better wear across the tire over the duration of a number of laps but I think you're losing out on a bit of grip through the corners coming down that low. You will feel that the car is sliding a little bit more um, with it on four. It does feel much grippier on five. Um, towing, obviously we're trying to get a little bit of response from the car on turning, just to be more accurate through some of the mountain sections at least. And the caster, I've just lowered this purely because of my shoulder. I don't want the weight in the wheel. But by all means, if you want to add more caster, it might very much be more um, pointy. Maybe up to 10, maybe 9, something like that. But for now, I've just lowered it just to keep the wheel a bit lighter. Um, traction control, another one that's very important. I've gone to 3 um, overall. Uh, I have tried coming down to as far as 1, um, but... It is a very fine balancing act between being aggressive on the throttle coming out of some of these corners and then feeding the power in. Obviously, if you're coming down to areas like I've got it set here, three and two and one maybe, you need to be aware that you cannot just plant the accelerator full whack as you come out of some of the corners. It just It's just a progressive feed in, but it's not a whack on the throttle or you will be spinning out the rear of the car. ABS, I always feel um, Bathurst is a bit of a dusty circuit and coming down to two or three even, do, it does feel like the car starts to lock up, especially as you come down into Forest Elbow. Um, the car feels quite unstable coming through there anyway um, and the car's unstable in a lot of areas, especially coming over the skyline when you've got a little dab of brake just to settle the car. Um, so I, I think ABS 4 is the better option at Bathurst, not every circuit. Um, as per usual, running um, brake discs 1, and as you see, you've just come down through there. That was the sort of wear that I was getting over, say, um, 8 laps. You can see the front tyres, they're graining, as you would sort of expect, um, a little bit more on the inside of the tyre as opposed to the outside of the tyre but again at the the rear of the car there's a heck of a lot more wear going on on the inside of the tyre although the graphic is set wrong again on these I think these actually need swapping over because the, the wear 2.60 if we look down at the right hand rear tyre um, it's wearing on the inside of the tyre more than the outside so for me the graphic should be the other way around really um, <clears throat> but yeah you can see I think I think as I finished that lap I did have a bit of an off to be honest so there is um, a little bit of a flat spot appeared on that front left tyre um, coming into the anti-roll bars I have for this setup alone I have increased the anti-roll bar um, because with more fuel on board it does change the characteristics of the car obviously you've got the, the weight in the front of the car and the rear end starts to feel a little bit looser um, so I did increase the anti-roll bar by one click at the front. Um, no other changes, I don't think, um, for this setup. The, the only other difference to the setup that I'm going to show you next is that it's a hot lap setup. And this is more for a race setup um, with the extra fuel on board. And it does make a difference to way, the way the car performs. Obviously, the, the bump stop range as well. There is a few sections, especially for the mountain area where you're going over quite a lot of undulation in the circuit. And just to stop the car bottoming out through the very fast uh, left-handers at the top of the mountain, um, just lifted that front end to bump stop three, or the range, so it's not hitting that bump stop and just causing the car to be unsettled. Um, lowering the preload just to try and stop the car from oversteering on corner exit and uh, just allowing a more tighter turning circle without locking the wheels as well as you come down through forest elbow and i do like a pointy car um so the steering ratio i've lowered this to 13 some people i've seen driving 14 15 which is more or less the default sort of setup um, but i do prefer it to feel a little bit more pointy now the brake balance um you do tend to, see, tend to see a lot of YouTubers running this even down at 54, but for me, that's, 
it just rotates the car way too much um, and I just end up spinning out uh, I don't know whether that's how I'm, I've got my brake pedal set um, it just doesn't work for me that low if, if you want it to come a little bit lower you might come down to 74 uh, 57.4 57.6 in some of the corners if you if you feel inclined um, some of the corners could do with a little bit more rotation in the car but this is to create a stable setup so as much as you're coming into the corner and you might feel like the car's understeering a little bit as soon as you start getting back on the power again it the car does start to rotate um, so if you wanted to rotate the car through the braking phase of the corner you could bring that down a tiny bit um, but it's more to do with keeping the car stable through the braking phase for me especially at Bathurst Looking at the dampers again, something that I've spent a long, long time um, messing with over the course of this channel. And we haven't got the benefit of Motec, so we cannot see um, how the dampers are performing. And if you look at how the suspension's set up, we've got 141500 at the front and 149500 at the rear. So that as much as the um, the graphic shows the incrementation as being a lot further along. The, the rear of the car is in essence stiffer than the front of the car with the newton meters of the torque springs within the um, suspension. So with the rear of the car being stiffer in the suspension, the rear of the car should be stiffer in the damper section as well. So just a tiny difference, um, seven all around and i have tried numerous different variations within the damper setup and just end up coming back to um how they set at the moment um it's very hard to say much more about the dampers when you haven't got the technical detail of motec to show you actually what's happening with the suspension uh, on console you can only go on how the car feels as a driver Coming to the ride height, obviously, there's like I've mentioned before, there's a lot of undulation in the circuit. So just trying to stop the car from bottoming out. Obviously, you can see the front ride height is set. Just I have had it at 56, 57 even. Um, but obviously, which always trying to get the car as low as we can. I think I was running 57 with 80 at the rear. So just trying to lower the car a little bit without it scraping every five minutes. Um, and I have tried to run the rear wing as low as I can so that you're not a sitting duck down some of the long straights but I have seen people hitting incredible speeds on PC at the end of the straights yet they still seem to have the same sort of downforce that I'm running through the mountain section which is just impossible it, it, you, you cannot set the car up in this way on console to get the highest speeds along the straights and carry the same down for us through the mountain section it's it's very disheartening watching youtube videos because they just seem like they've got the best of everything um so on console th th this is my issue really the there isn't the same level of acceleration top speed and grip all at the same time it just doesn't seem to come so running nine at the rear wing and one on the front splitter <clears throat> and you might find um, that you may need to open out this duct at the rear if you're running long stints in high weather high temperatures maybe in the 40s there just isn't enough cooling for the rear tires you just see the tires start to get hot um, not so much the brakes but it would benefit um, opening the rear ducts just to cool the tyres um, which could be beneficial on long stints <coughs> um, so looking at the setups that I've got if I, re if I load this one back in this is for um, hot lapping and you can see there I set a 202.4 35 celsius during a hot lap session Obviously, you, you tend to start the stint where the tyres aren't particularly perfect, but they come into a perfect phase throughout that, that stint. And I'll show the video for that um, at the end. I'll show all the show all the laps at the end, and you'll know that this setup. When I show the hot lap, this is the setup that I use to do that. 
so feel free to go through that you can see they're very low uh, tire <coughs> very low fuel run um, slight changes in the anti roll bar um, still just as stiff same sort of setup same damper setup um, same at the uh, rear I think it's just the the anti roll bar there um, and a slight change in the caster angle just slightly lighter if we go to the next setup and this was absolutely flat out hot lap setup in um, 10 degrees yeah 10 degrees air temperature and 100% cloud cover still optimum grip um, but I'll show that video as well at the end so that you can see uh, the lap time for itself and a slight adjustment to the rear wing I did find that it's so much more unstable in cooler temperatures um, I don't quite understand why this is obviously I've closed out the brake ducts because I really struggled to get temperature through the tires you can see them set there at 27.4 and that's to start the run so I think they got up to around 28.5 as soon as I start the lap um, but they soon start to cool throughout the lap so trying to keep the temperature in the tire was very hard so hence closing out the brake ducts at the front and at the rear just to try and keep that temperature within within the tire throughout the, the throughout the lap um, so I will just I will just load um, this one that we've been using for this session <clears throat> and we'll just take a quick drive around the circuit I'll just point out a few key issues that I think are important for the lap I just changed that horrible driving position so when you first start out and I've noticed um, this was very much more predominant when you start driving in the online sessions is how much more you need to warm the tires on the first lap now for me when when you first start warming the tires on this out lap it there's a sensation that it feels like the the, the steering is tighter it's there's a much tighter feel um, through the through the grip of the car it just feels like it's pulling somewhere that it doesn't normally once the tires are warmed up it's a very strange feeling so if you start out this lap and you come absolutely flying through that section I've got no doubt whatsoever that you'll find yourself in the wall um, through that first corner <clears throat> and even through some of these the car just just sort of pulls to the wall it's a very tight feeling through the wheel um, you don't get that feeling once the tyres are warmed up it feels very edgy the car through the mountain section I do drive it very differently um, warming the tyres up but you sort of want to be practicing <coughs> all these lines at a slower speed so definitely don't really want to be touching the brake pedal through there but I always like a nice tight line through the apex almost like braking early and then getting on the power late or earlier on the power excuse me <coughs> <coughs> I am just at the end of this cold I think uh, it's not Covid <laughs> braking just before the, three, the 100 yard it is faster to come through here in third gear but you will find the rear end of the car is pretty slidey you can come down to second but I do think third gear is quicker but it just takes more control on the brake pedal <laughs> a lot more trail braking so braking at the right hand side here where the boards change down into first gear just rolling through the apex and just just as you hit the apex you want to be back on the power you can see we've still not got temperature in the tires still want to be hitting like 27 before we can see ultimate grip really so just staying in fifth down to third gear it does feel a little bit unstable slight understeer maybe slight oversteer on the mid corner section and you want to be carrying full throttle all the way through here to about here 
breaking hard and it's really important to carry momentum through that corner it's a very momentum corner and then just easing back on the power need to be full throttle all the way through this section absolutely flat out any lift here will cost you maybe two or three tenths all the way through this mountain section you can take a slight lift through here but it's just sort of staying on the power but not on the power it's just like a little lift of the throttle and I always like to be in fifth gear coming over here and then down into fourth, third and then down to second just on the apex lift just lift as you come through there on the throttle and it just rolls through coming fourth gear through here down into second then down into first <coughs> and then on the power much earlier than that you'll see from the fast videos probably better to talk through a fast video it's very hard to um, get the temperature in the tires whilst driving at these slower speeds <coughs> and actually taught you through the lap you see coming down to second gear you'll find it's it is easier it's more consistent to come down to second through there but it's certainly faster to carry and hold uh, third gear So I'll try and go for a little bit of a faster lap. It's just holding out the gear just till you sort of in the yellow. <coughs> so just staying in fifth gear. See it's a little bit unstable through the mid portion of the corner. Nowhere near enough momentum through that section. So staying flat on the power. I had to take a little lift there, tyres just not up to temperature then yeah very very tricky once the tyres aren't <laughs> fully warmed up but you see I was much earlier on the power there and it gives you a much better run out the out of the forest elbow but it never works to plan these videos when you're trying to um, show the fastest line so I will I will put all the videos at the end and maybe talk through them um, or maybe just show them picked up a little bit of damage there so I know I've got two seconds worth of damage down the bottom <coughs> so I'm not even sure we'll be able to set a fast lap now the aero is getting um, affected we'll see how we go tyres are actually at temperature now so much better just carrying that momentum Still a little lift. Lots of understeer. 
you can see I've not got the exit that I really wanted. <coughs> so I'll try and hold third gear through this last bit. A lot more trail braking. You see you get a much stronger exit So there we go, half an hour's worth of um, setups for the Porsche at Bathurst. Like I say, I've spent a long time um, doing these setups. Um, so if you would like to make any donations through the link on the PayPal, please do. Um, I don't know whether I'll continue putting setups on the Setspace website or I'll just keep putting them on here. Um, I do like to think that I'm, I do this channel um, for the fun of doing it and I think last year it was starting to become more of um, more of a niche to people that want to buy setups and I, I think I'm happier just putting them on YouTube um, but I would appreciate if you have got um, the funds and you don't mind uh, making a small donation use the friends and family link on the PayPal um, section in the description it would be very much appreciated um, for the time that I put in here. Like I say, hundreds and hundreds of laps um, just to try and find that setup that works. Um, I have tested it online and more than happy with how it performs. Um, obviously you've got a number of setups within there, um, but yeah, please enjoy using the setups. Good luck uh, with all your races with them. Um, and good luck with 2020. Ciao for now.